And for anyone that hasn't heard of Blue Eddy, allow me to introduce you real quick. This company was founded 12 years ago back in 2012 and they offer a slew of products ranging from portable power stations to modular energy storage systems, accommodating the grid connected home, the off-grid dwellings, and even commercial use. Blue Eddy is a trusted brand with cutting edge technologies that continue to bring new products to the market on a regular basis. Their ESS systems and portable power stations are trusted by millions of customers around the globe and the power core of Blue Eddy stands for quality, strength, and stability. They serve solar installers, distributors, commercial, residential, and individual users. Now, Blue Eddy's mission is to deliver clean energy solutions to empower communities and individuals. To find out more, you can check out their website at blueeddypower.com or find the link in the description below. And this is referred to as a modular design. This is an all-in-one uh, system that integrates the inverter and the batteries and you can start out with two batteries which is 9920 watt hours or you can expand this to four batteries which is 19840 watt hours or what i have here is three batteries for a total of 14800 and 80 watt hours. And the EP800 might be the most adaptable modular unit on the market. I have this connected to an existing solar system and a new mobile solar system. That one is AC, this one is DC direct. So my AC has 27 microinverters that is uh, fed into my main panel. And then from the main panel, I have that connected into a breaker that comes over here through this switch. And then we feed in and we can charge these batteries with AC. That is a lot less uh, productive because we have to convert at the roof and then we come back down to here and then we're kind of converting back into DC, put it into the batteries, then back into AC and feeding the house with uh, through the transfer switch. That's AC coupling. We could do DC coupling over here, which is basically what we're doing because we have that little uh, solar array. We're coming into this temporary setup that we have here and feeding that DC power into this inverter. This inverter then feeds into these batteries and charges the batteries. Then the battery sends back out to our load center and feeds the circuits in the house. For the most part, we always have a source of power, whether it's coming from the AC feeding into the inverter and doing its thing and sending it back out to the circuit load, or it's DC coming in, feeding it into the batteries and back into the circuit load. Or if this power is off and it's nighttime, we're not doing any production, then hopefully we have enough capacity in the batteries to get us through the night. Uh, and maybe the next day if it's a little bit cloudy um, and then it would, the inverter sends it back to the circuit load. So no matter what scenario we're in we are pretty much covered and that's what i mean by the adaptability of this system you can actually use this and not even have solar array at all hooked up to it if you want to just use this as a battery backup to your house you can do that so no matter if you've got an ac coupled dc coupled or not coupled at all this could be a solution for you to have backup power when the power goes out so I wanna talk about the 50 amp breaker that we installed, the 60 amp breaker that we installed, the AC disconnect, all of the circuit breakers that uh, are feeding the essential loads, the two 50 amp breakers that are at the top of our transfer switch and the lines that are going in for the backup and for the grid. So let's talk about the 50 amp connection first. That's connected with six gauge wire, comes up into our trough and then over into right here, this breaker. And this breaker will actually stay in the off position until we want to utilize pulling power from the grid to power these essential loads. The way that it's working currently is that we have this breaker turned on, which is using the EP800 and the battery backup system to power the essential loads. Now let's get back on track and talk about the 60 amp breaker that we have wired with four gauge wire that comes up into our trough, then back down into the AC disconnect switch from the AC disconnect switch, it comes over and feeds into the EP800. Let's talk about the breakers because essentially all we've done is take the breakers from this panel and put them in this box. Disconnect your white line and your black line from the breaker. And those wires that you just disconnected are the wires that are running your plugs or your lights or whatever might be on that circuit. So now we need to run a fresh wire from that side to here and then connect it. So we'll connect the black wire to the black wire and the white wire to the white wire. Then we'll move over here and then we'll put in our breaker and connect the white and black line to whatever breaker that we want the circuit to be. So essentially all we've done is take a breaker from here and then move it over there. 
The reason you're seeing a lot of red wires over here are just because we changed the color of wire from black to red on all the 20 amp circuits. That's what we had on hand, so that's what we wanted to use. Didn't want to have to go out and buy new wire. You can just use the black wire for that as well, but you want to make sure that you're sizing that correctly. For all of the red wires that you see there, those are 12 gauge wire on 20 amp circuits. All the black wires uh, that was going into the 15 amp is your 14 gauge wire. Now that leads me to talk about the 30 amp circuit. And to connect that circuit, we use 10 gauge wire and it powers a water heater. And hopefully that helps you understand the wiring and how the system works a little better. Let's move on. This is something that's very unique or I find it to be very unique is that the batteries are 99.2 volts and your operating range is 77.5 to 113.65 volts. Your rated uh, energy capacity is 50 amp hours and how you get this 4960 watt hours is if you take that 99.2 volts times it by that 50 amp hours you'll come up with 4960 watt hours the max charge current is 25 amps and the max discharge is 50 amps and then we have our discharge temperatures our charging temperatures our working humidity and the product weight all that information is right here so this tells us a lot about the battery and this is a very heavy battery at 58 kilograms or right at 128 pounds and next let's take a look up here at the inverter and we'll have a max input of 9,000 watts we have a mppt voltage range of 150 to 500 uh, volts and you got pv1 and pv2 You'll see right there's your difference in your um, amps that can come in and we'll just kind of scroll down through here so you can see everything this is 60 hertz and then we have the different types of the battery the backup and general parameters of everything so this is nema 4x rated and it has an operating temperature of negative 20 celsius up to 50 celsius each battery can be turned off by the breaker or by the power. So if we turn this power off, then we're gonna be able to turn the battery completely off. We could turn the circuit breaker off that is encased in a waterproof housing. So you have to unscrew this, then you gotta lift this up and switch the breaker off. So you got double protection at the side of the battery, which is very nice. Um, so we can turn the breaker or the buttons off and each one of those batteries have that. Now we're using this as a backup system. So a lot of people might just wanna use it as a backup to your AC uh, already um, installed solar system. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're using this as the backup. So when the power goes out and we've had three instances in the last month where this kicked on and kept the house powered even when the power was out. And we really didn't realize that until we look inside the app and see actually when the power has dropped over time. <laughs> so it's really cool to have that type of functionality that switches over in a matter of 20 milliseconds. And that's really quick. So you don't even really notice anything going on. Now the next thing that a lot of people might use this for is peak pricing. You could offset your utility bill with this by setting your time of use. And I've discussed that in previous videos. So if you wanna learn more about that, be sure to check out my other uh, Blue Eddy EP800 uh, videos that I've put out in the past. And I'll talk more about that in depth. And this system can easily power all the lights in your property, uh, refrigerators, freezers, washer, dryer, and even hot water heaters and do it all at the same time. And a matter of fact, if we look inside of, of the electrical panel, what I'm actually powering is all the plugs that are in my garage, the living room plugs, the kitchen plugs, the garage and hallway lights, the bathroom plugs, the master bedroom, the hot water heater, which is a 240 volt, 30 amp hot water heater, which is right there. Uh, the kitchen and living room lights, the refrigerator, and both uh, bedrooms that we have on this property. So it is almost backing up the entire property on just this 50 amp box. So 50 amps can run a lot of juice through it. I've installed this inside of my garage, but this is NEMA 4X rated on both the EP800 inverter 
and the B500 batteries. So this can be installed indoors or outdoors. If you're gonna install it outdoors, it is recommended that you buy the Blue Eddy shed that is designed for this unit as well. Uh, maybe to protect it from UV rays or something of that sort, but it is NEMA 4X rated. And that basically means you can use it indoors and outdoors and it protects it from uh, water and different elements that it's gonna encounter when it's outside. Now, I don't live in the most uh, sunny area in the United States. I live in central Kentucky and we get a decent amount of sunshine, but nothing like you would see out in Arizona or down in Florida or different parts of the world where you just get a lot of sunshine throughout the year. Now in the winter, we don't get much and we have seen some cloudy days and we've seen some really sunny days. And over the last 30 days, we've produced enough to keep this going uh, to charge the batteries pretty much completely off grid for those circuits I was talking about earlier. Now, if you max this out at the 9,000 watts of inputs from your solar system, it would easily charge three batteries and even the maximum of four batteries uh, in just a couple hours of sunshine. And you can have control over the system directly from the Blue Eddy app from anywhere in the world. So let's take a closer look into the app and discover what features I love most about the system. And here we are on the home screen of the app and we can easily identify the status, the energy flow, and the inverter status. So I'm gonna talk about those three points real quick because obviously we can see the energy flow right here. We've got 2.3 kilowatts of production coming in, uh, feeding the battery, and uh, 235 watts feeding the circuits right now. We actually have zero watts coming from the grid, so we're running completely off grid. So our operation status is that we're functioning as we should, and our inverter status down here at the bottom is showing grid connection operation. We can have this uh, turn to off-grid operation, and there is another point that I wanna make, and we can change the working modes inside the app. So if we go up to that little gear in the right-hand corner, and we scroll down to uh, time of use, which is the working modes, we have three options to pick from, backup, self-consumption, and time of use. Currently, I'm set in time of use, but let's touch base on backup. In the backup mode, the system's going to prioritize keeping the batteries fully charged, then using the power from the connected solar array or the grid to power the circuits. And if we come back to the home screen, you'll see that everything is prioritizing toward the battery, whether it's the DC connected or the grid sending power to it. It's prioritizing getting that battery back to 100% and then sending whatever power is needed uh, to power the circuits. And this is a good mode to have it set on if you know bad weather is coming in your area because it's going to prioritize getting those batteries back to 100%. So if you have a power outage, you're going to have backup power. Now we're going to move over to the uh, self-consumption. So we'll go back in. We'll go down to our working mode. We'll go into um, the backup and then self-consumption. In this mode, the system is going to prioritize direct solar energy consumption for household needs. Any surplus energy is stored in the batteries for power outages or when the solar production is not available. This mode is a great choice if you're gonna be running completely off grid. So let's head back over to the home screen. The uh, AC has been disconnected and now we're prioritizing the solar connection to charge the batteries and feed the circuits. And let's head back over to the last working mode, which is gonna be your time of use. And what this is, you can actually schedule when you're gonna be using your AC power or the DC power because you can avoid those peak hour rates by setting a schedule to do that. And you can see here, I got some examples that I have off peak and then I have peak and then I have off peak. So if you're gonna set this, you gotta start with the earliest time going into the latest time. So I had to set uh, one period of time between midnight and 7.59 a.m. And then my peak hours would start at eight in the morning till six, six o'clock at night. And then again, it goes off peak between 6.01 and midnight. So we head back over here. You can set your state of charge. Uh, I set mine at 90, it seems to be working well there. And if we go back, so right now we're in peak hours. So we're gonna prioritize the DC connection. And 
we're doing the solar production to charge the batteries back up to 100% and to power the load. If we didn't have any solar production currently, then we would be pulling power from the batteries to cover this essential load. Now, after six o'clock, we can now start using the grid again because we're at lower peak hours and we're saving money by doing that. And this is ideal for areas with time-based electricity pricing. This would be a great option to avoid those peak rates, essentially eliminating peak pricing altogether. You can set up to six different times to match the times exactly for your peak hour and non-peak hour rates. So first we'll start with the hot water. We'll turn on the hot water to engage the hot water heater. And this is an electric hot water heater, so this is a major consumer of power. And while we're waiting on the hot water heater to fully engage, we'll go ahead and flip on all of the lights in the house. We have four ceiling fans that we're gonna turn on. And we have this refrigerator running, those two freezers backed up. And we don't wanna forget the TV and the home stereo system, coffee maker, and a Ninja Foodie. And you can see that we're running at 7.8 kilowatts of consumption, we're producing 2.3 kilowatts of solar production, and we're pulling 620 watts from the grid with a little bit coming from the battery as well, it looks like. I'm gonna let this go for about 10 to 15 minutes for a short-term load capacity. And while we have this under a large load, I thought it would be pretty cool to see exactly what the sound level was coming out of this. This is one of the quietest inverters that I've ever experienced. Sound uh, reading, we're about 18 inches away right here. 39 to 40 decibels. That is extremely quiet for an inverter of this size. And while we're doing some fun tests, let's get a thermal scan of the inverter itself and see how hot it is. The hottest point that I'm seeing right now is 110 Fahrenheit on this side. And if we come around over here, we don't have anything over 85 degrees. So that is keeping the system really cool, especially since we have a large load put on this inverter at the moment. So let's look at the batteries. We don't have anything heating up there. This is understandable and very acceptable to be 108 to 115 Fahrenheit when you got that large of a load on there. We'll see that the electrical panels, everything is cool there. So this thing is, is rocking, man. This thing's awesome. And after about 15 minutes, everything is still operating completely flawlessly. We're still consuming around 7.7 .7 uh, kilowatt hours. It's fluctuating anywhere from six to seven kilowatt hours, depending on what's going on in the house with all those uh, circuits turned on. But I'm super impressed with this, especially on the short term. Now I want to do a long term 24 hour load test. We'll set everything back to normal. I'll get this charged up to 100% and then I'll check back in with you once we get uh, 24 hours from right now. And what a difference a day makes because today we're absolutely no sun. We have heavy cloud cover and we're not producing much solar whatsoever. Uh, actually, we're producing a little bit more than what I anticipated, but only 490 watts. And we're consuming uh, that uh, hot water heater is really just eating it up. And we've been running this test for 24 hours now and we are at 43% on the battery life. And the reason that we're at that is because we absolutely have no sun uh, to charge those batteries up. Like you've seen previously in the video, we were able to get up around 23, 2400 watts and it would be able to keep up because actually the hot water heater just kicked off and we're only uh, using around 300 to 500 watts, just depending on what's going on on the circuit. But because we have this time of use set, we're down to 42%. So as we, and this will make it past the six o'clock hour tonight. And when it does, it'll charge back up from the AC. So the 24 hour load test handled everything flawlessly. I mean, this thing has yet to disappoint me in any way. So I'm very confident with recommending it.